I'm Tia Borden with Mining IR. Beside me is Alan Carter, CEO and President of Cabral Gold. Alan, thank you so much for joining me today. Nice to be here, Tia. Can you give us a bit of an overview of the company? Yeah, Cabral Gold is an exploration development company. Our key asset is in Brazil. Uh, this is a company I founded back in 2016, went public in 2017. We have an advanced gold exploration project. Actually, it's more of a district. Um, we've got uh, two deposits there so that we've discovered so far that have resources on them. Uh, they, together they have about 1.2 million ounces um, uh, in resources, both indicated and inferred. And we've made two new discoveries in the last uh, 18 months. So um, the district is really growing. We've got 43 targets outside those four deposits. So. Um, Pretty exciting times. What's Brazil like as a mining jurisdiction? Excellent. Uh, this is a country that you can work in all year round. You know, we don't have a, obviously Brazil doesn't have a winter. It has a wet yeah. season, but we've been able to drill all the way through the wet, wet season. So 12 months uh, you know, drill season means that 12 months uh, sort of news flow. So all year round news flow. Um, Brazil is a resource rich country. Um, it's got the world's largest iron ore mining complex. It's a big producer of things like aluminum, um, gold, it's a major producer of gold. Some of the world's largest gold mining companies are in Brazil. Kinross' biggest gold mine is in Brazil. Um, you've got Equinox Mining there, you've got, or Equinox Gold, sorry. You've got Anglo-American, Anglo Gold are, um, are, are very active. You've got Yamana, London Mining, and of course, uh, you know, one of Brazil's largest companies is Vale a polymetallic miner that mines all sorts of things. Rio Tinto's active there, BHP, etc. It's a great place to be. So it's a, a fantastic place to be, you know, and I've been working there for yeah. some time, so, um, and we've had a lot of success, so. Can you, t can you branch off and tell us a little bit about the success that you've experienced this past year? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, the project that we've got, uh, really, let's, let's just step back a little bit here, because the project that we've got is in a region called the Tapajos region of northern Brazil. And the Tapajos region of northern Brazil is the site of the world's largest ever recorded gold rush. So we're at the Mines and Money Conference here in London. Most people are very well aware of the California rush of the mid-1800s, the various gold rushes in Australia and other places. Most of them have never even heard of the Tapajos gold rush. The Tapajos gold rush happened in the 1980s, and the number of people that rushed into this part of northern Brazil to wash gold from the streams was 10 times the number of people wow. that went to California. So, so it is a site of a major rush. Um, during the 1980s, there was approximately 30 million ounces of placer gold recovered from the streams here, over quite a wide region of about 200 kilometers across. Our project area was the richest area of placer workings. So there's over 2 million ounces of placer gold that come out of the streams here. So, um, um, you know, so it's a very, very prospective area. And all that placer gold is obviously being eroded over millions of years from hard rock sources and what we've been doing is we've been gradually systematically running down all the hard rock sources or as many as we can find to uh, identify um, hard rock sources of that placer gold within our project area as i said it was the biggest placer camp and we've been having some spectacular drill results i mean just in the last couple of weeks we put out some results on one of the new discoveries i mentioned we cut 5.3 meters at 27 grams a ton and that in itself is a 50 meter step out hole from six and a half meters at 11 grams or something so there's and that's just an example if you look at the press releases on our on our website you'll see there's some really spectacular uh, drill results that we've put out over the last sort of 12 to 18 months and what's the next year going to look like for you well it really depends on access to capital to you um, you know having a district is fantastic because you've got all this upside but obviously uh, there is a requirement to drill all these things and Given the current state of the market, it's a little bit difficult for us to plan because access to capital is severely restricted right now. Of course, the other flip side of that is it represents an enormous opportunity because a lot of companies like ours are trading at real, uh, you know, 52 week lows. Um, so I think for anybody watching this, I think if you're an investor contemplating making an investment in either Cabral Gold or similar type of exploration companies, you need to look at the fundamentals of the company. You need to look at management's track record. You need to look at their assets. You need to look at the upside, the jurisdiction, the neighborhood, you know, who else is in the neighborhood, et cetera, et cetera. So um, look, the plan is to grow the resource base here. We would like to expand it from the current 1.2 to 2 million ounces. Ultimately, I think it will grow significantly beyond that, but that will take additional time and additional money. So um, you know, if we are able to raise capital, we can get, uh, get drilling and, and, uh, and hopefully grow this resource within the next nine to 12 months to plus two million ounces. That's the objective. 
Alan, you you are the owner of the company, and your your experience and well and, and knowledge. You have a wealth of knowledge of gold. Can you tell us about your background? Yeah, well, I'm one of the owners, and I'm also a founder of this company. I'm, I'm the biggest shareholder. So far, I've put in about $2.8 million, Canadian, of my own money into the company. So I'm very much aligned with my shareholders, and I'm not taking a big salary either, by the way, Tia. Um, so, um, look, my background is I have a PhD in geology, it's specifically in gold mineralization. I spent 10 years living in South America, with, uh, working with Rio Tinto and BHP. So I'm fluent in both Spanish and Portuguese. Um, I had... Um, uh, I spent several years uh, doing business development work for BHP, so doing deals with juniors. In 2004, I decided to set up a couple of companies with Eric Friedland, who's Robert Friedland's kid brother. And Eric and I established two companies. One was called Peregrine Metals and one was called Peregrine Diamonds. Peregrine Metals in particular was a massive success because we picked up an old Rio Tinto project in Argentina and ended up selling Peregrine Metals for about uh, $480 million. That was back in 2011. So um, I... I, I was directly involved in the, develop, in the discovery of the Tocantinsinho gold deposit, which is actually immediately next door to our project in Brazil. They've just raised 540 million US dollars to, or at least the company that owns it now, G Mining, has just raised 540 million dollars to put that uh, project into production, which is very gratifying for me as one of the co-discoverers in that, because that was a, a completely grassroots project. When we picked it up, there was no drill holes in it. Now somebody's come along and, and raised $540 million, and that is going to be Brazil's third largest gold mine. So I've done a few other things, um, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I think, I think Brazil in particular is a country that has enormous potential mm -hmm. um, because it has, it's very commodity rich, um, has a very well-developed mining uh, infrastructure and industry, and, and the, uh, as I said, it's largely underexplored. It's, it's largely unexplored. Mm -hmm. It's not underexplored, it's unexplored. Alan, what are some of the catalysts that investors should be aware of? Yeah, the catalysts for us are, um, look, we have, we're looking at, our project has quite a lot of oxide mineralization on the top of the deposits, which is weathered material, which contains gold. So we're looking at scoping, um, scoping that out right now. We're doing internal scoping studies regarding the economic viability of that. And that gives us to a potential pathway to near-term production. Um, and so in the next few months, uh, investors should look to see results of some of that uh, scoping work. We are planning on doing a, a pre-feasibility study in the next few months. But again, all this is dependent on our access to capital. And then additional drilling. Um, like I said, in the near term, what we'd like to do is, uh, is on the two new discoveries, actually, um, do a little bit more drilling so that we can establish maiden resources on the two new deposits. Certainly the two existing deposits have a lot of upside as well. So um, that's, that's also you know, additional drilling that we'd like to do in the next six to nine months. But again, I'll preface it by saying it is dependent on, on having access to capital. Sounds like you have a busy year ahead, lots of, su of success already. And is there anything else that you would like to leave our viewers with? No, I, I don't really think so. I think, I think we've covered most of the bases. Um, as I said, Cabral Gold in a nutshell basically is a company where the management team and the founders are the largest shareholders in this company. Uh, we've been directly responsible for five grassroots gold discoveries in Brazil. So we've got a track record. We know what we're doing. We've had quite a lot of success in terms of doing deals. We have an asset here, 1.2 million ounces, which is going to almost certainly going to grow. Uh, there's no way it cannot grow significantly moving forward. We're right next door to a massive new uh, gold mine, which will come on stream in uh, 2024, in the uh, second half of 2024. We're in a great jurisdiction. Um, so I think that, that, and we've also got this option to get in production from the oxide material. So I think with that... Um, you're, you're set. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think that summarizes where we're at pretty well. Alan, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to chat with you. Thank you.